Hey, ever feel like stress is just wearing you down mentally and physically? That's because chronic stress doesn't just affect your mood, it actually causes inflammation in your brain. And over time, it can lead to anxiety, depression, and even cognitive decline. Today, we are going to dive into how stress hormones like cortisol create a dangerous cycle of neuroinflammation and what you can do to break it. Hi, if you are new here, my name is Lisa Ann De Garcia, and I help you optimize your brain health so you and your family can feel calm, focused, and productive every day. Today's topic is something that we all deal with, which is stress. But what you may not know is that stress does more than just make you feel anxious and overwhelmed. Chronic stress can actually trigger inflammation in your brain, leading to issues like anxiety, depression, and even cognitive decline. And in today's video, I am going to break down exactly how this happens and what you can do to protect your brain from the damaging effects of stress. If you are new here, make sure you check out the other videos in this series, Understanding Neuroinflammation, where we set the foundation for why inflammation is such a major concern in brain health. I have five pillars of reversing yeah, or restoring brain health. This is the first pillar, which is about inflammation. This is the fourth video in this series, and these videos come out on Monday. On Thursdays, I have another series, not really a series. It's more about videos that are changing maybe belief systems or myths or maybe challenging something, a little bit thought-provoking, and so those are on Thursdays. So be sure to like and subscribe so these important videos get more reach and so that you are the first one to notify, be notified when I drop a new video. So let's start with what happens in your body when you experience stress. When you're stressed, your body signals the release of hormone called cortisol from your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are sitting right on your kidneys. Cortisol is often referred to as the stress hormone because it helps your body prepare to deal with immediate challenges. Okay, so there, it's a normal response because we should just, you know, our bodies are, we are going to be under stress and our bodies are helping us to prepare for that. Whether it's running from danger or responding to an urgent deadline, and in small doses, cortisol is helpful. It raises your alertness, it increases energy, and it temporarily boosts your immune system. But when stress becomes chronic, meaning you are in a constant state of stress, your cortisol levels stay elevated for a long period of time, and that is where the trouble begins. Chronic cortisol release sets off a cascade or domino effect inside your brain and body. Elevated cortisol levels disrupts the balance of neurotransmitters, the chemical messages in your brain, leading to emotional imbalances like anxiety and depression. But even more concerning is the role it plays in um, driving neural inflammation. And so we're just like talking about the brain, but it does that all over the body, okay? When cortisol levels remain high over time, they trigger inflammation in the brain. This is because cortisol, while initially anti-inflammatory, becomes harmful in excess. It activates immune cells in the brain called microglia. Once these cells are activated, they release pro-inflammatory cytokines. Those are molecules that cause inflammation. In the short term, this inflammation might not seem like a big deal, but over time, it can damage brain cells and even disrupt communication between neurons. When your brain is constantly inflamed, it becomes harder for it to regulate mood. That's why chronic stress is strongly linked to conditions like anxiety and depression. The inflammation makes it more difficult for your brain to produce and regulate neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, which are chemicals that are crucial for mood stability and happiness. Neuro chronic neuroinflammation often or also affects cognitive function over time. It can lead to brain fog and memory issues and even increase the risk of developing neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. So in essence, the longer your brain stays inflamed due to stress, the more damage is done to your cognitive abilities. What makes chronic stress so dangerous is that it creates a vicious cycle. Elevated cortisol leads to inflammation in the brain, and inflammation in the brain in turn triggers more stress that keeps the brain locked in a constant state of stress and inflammation, making it incredibly difficult to break free. So as inflammation spreads, it can even affect other parts of the body, leading to conditions like high blood pressure, digestive issues, and autoimmune disease. So inflammation doesn't necessarily start in your brain, but it can, and or it could start somewhere else, but it basically becomes systemic. So how can you break the cycle of stress and inflammation? First, it's crucial to manage your stress levels before they become chronic. So you want to use techniques such as mindfulness, meditation, deep breathing exercises, regular physical activity uh, can help lower cortisol levels and give your brain a break from constant stress. Also, focus on an anti-inflammatory diet. There's such a thing. So go Google anti-inflammatory diet 
You want foods that are going to be not typical inflammatory triggers. If you want to be specific, there are blood tests that you can take, either a finger prick or a blood draw, and then they will test to see which foods are causing or creating an inflammatory effect in your body. And what you do is they usually rate them a green, yellow, and red. If they're in the green zone, it's okay. If they're in the yellow zone, you need to remove them for three months. And if they're in the red zone, you need to remove them for six months. And it kind of resets your body. Just because it's in the green, the problem that most of us have, and I'm totally me included, is that we don't have enough variety of our food. So if, in some people, when they take that blood test, it's like Christmas tree lights, like red, yellow, everywhere. That's more indication that you just have a leaky gut. You just need to repair your gut lining before, you know, it doesn't mean you shouldn't take out maybe the things that are maybe the most red or the highest. But if you take out everything, sometimes you're like, what am I going to eat? So address the gut. But if you do have a few um, foods that in particular are triggering, then you need to remove them. And then when you test again in three months, you'll probably be okay. But if you have a very limited diet, some of those greens can become yellow. So you need to be careful that you're not eating those greens every day. So rotating our foods and having a variety of a diet is something that we should all strive for. Also, we need to prioritize sleep. Chronic stress often disrupts sleep patterns, but quality sleep is essential for your brain to detox and recover from daily stress. I talked more about sleep last Thursday. I think um, when we talked about the dress dairy gas, so I'll go back and because I kind of did a little bit deeper dive in the sleep section. But your brain, when you're sleeping, your brain does shrink and purges toxins, and it's a detoxifying time that you want to prioritize sleep, and you're, it's repairing damaged cells, and which is a crucial part of reducing inflammation. You know, chronic stress is more than just a mental burden; it's a physical one too. So, especially for your brain. But managing your stress and taking care of your brain, you can break the cycle of neuroinflammation. One of my favorite first line of defense, even before supplements, um, because there's a lot of things you can do. In my video last week on Thursday, I did talk about, you know, diet, rest, exercise, supplement, or stress reduction, supplementation. Those are the five kind of components. Those are my five pillars for reducing brain health, but those are maybe the sister or five sister pillars of what you need to do no matter what you have um, going on. But my favorite first line of defense are the life patches. Um, and I just have one on right here. But these, A, because they're not a supplement, so you, it's not one more thing that you have to take. B, you stick it on your body and you go and you can forget about it. And it can go, it can pretty much go anywhere. What the patches are, and I didn't really explain this in the last Thursday's video, but they're designed with a, you know, it's kind of proprietary, so I don't know like, exactly how they do it, but there's a combination of amino acid salts, like, and then you know how when you, have you ever put salt in water and evaporate and it forms crystals? That's basically kind of what it's done, doing, and that holds a frequency, and that frequency is, so there's a frequency, and then these are reflectors, and what they're reflecting is your body emits infrared light. When your DNA, your photons, your DNA goes up and down, they create photons. And those photons is infrared light. So you are, your body's emitting an infrared light. These patches reflect the infrared light back. And then those frequencies are sent back with your signature infrared light. And then it gives your body directions to do something. This EM patch that I'm wearing right now, this one is really designed for balancing this nervous system and reducing inflammation. So it's a really good patch. But also the X39 patch is the one that elevates a, the common GHK copper peptide which in research has shown that when that is elevated, your stem cell activation or your stem cells are activated. So the older we are, the more important that is because our natural activation is very low. Um, there are other patches that do different things. These are my first line of defense though, because even for babies, you can't, you don't want to put them on their skin, but you can put these on your clothes. They don't have to be stuck to your skin because you're not absorbing anything. There's no chemicals. There's no medicines. It's not a vitamin. There's nothing that your body is absorbing. You're, it's reflecting back your infrared light. So you could put it on a baby blanket where they're sleeping or on their diaper or pets. And we'll put them in on the collar, on the inside of their collar, because some pets are really anxious too. So I really like this. Anyway, if you are curious more, I have an entire video um, that I'm linking below that talks about basic protocols, basic patching points, exactly what they are, what are all the different ones for all geared towards brain health. And if you have any specific questions about anything else, please just send me, you know, put a uh, question in the link below or figure out, you know, just send me a direct message and I will be sure 
to answer any questions that you have. Next week, we will be wrapping up this five-part series on inflammation by looking more closely at natural approaches of reducing neuroinflammation. So stay tuned for that. And I want to let you know that I have a link to a workshop below packed full of specific details on how to support your brain. I rotate through these workshops periodically. So just go to the description for the link of my current workshop. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. And lastly, if you have a question or a topic you would like me to dive into, please drop that in the comments so I can be sure to create a video around your question. Because if you have the question, other people probably have the same question too. All right, and until next time, bye-bye.